Hey everyone, welcome to 59 Tops Friday presented by Wax Pack Wisdom, where we talk baseball history through the cards we love. My name is Jake T. O'Donnell. We built the iconic 1959 Tops baseball set, and in this series we're going through every card to talk about the people, players, and teams who made up Major League Baseball in 1959. Today, we'll cover cards 150 through 155 in the set. Card number 150 belongs to Stan Musial of the St. Louis Cardinals. 1959 was the 18th big league season for Musial. He made his MLB debut in September of 1941 for the Cardinals. He played his final game almost exactly 22 years later. And over the course of over 3,000 games in between, all in a St. Louis Cardinals uniform, it can be reasonably argued that Stan the Man Musial was the most consistently great hitter in baseball history. The son of a Polish immigrant father, Musial was a star semi-pro player in his hometown of Denora, Pennsylvania, attracting the attention of MLB scouts, ultimately signing with the Redbirds. Musial hit 315 in his first full big league season in 1942, winning his first of three World Series rings that year as well. But 1943 was his first year of superstardom. Musial led the NL in all relevant average categories, games, at-bats, hits, doubles, and triples, easily winning the NL MVP award. He had another great year in 1944, once again leading the league in hits and the Cardinals to another World Series win. Musial missed the 1945 season serving in the U.S. Navy, but did not skip a beat upon his 1946 return, winning the NL batting title at 365 leading the league in hits, doubles, and triples, and taking another MVP and World Series title. 1948 was Musial's best season and one of the best individual offensive seasons in baseball history. He set career highs with 39 homers and a 376 average. He led the NL in runs, hits, doubles, triples, RBIs, total bases, and all important average categories. On four occasions in 1948, Musial collected five hits in a single game. It would be his third and last NL MVP season. The accolades kept piling up for Musial over the next decade plus. He'd win five more batting titles and amass over 200 hits thrice more. In 1954, Musial hit five homers over the course of a doubleheader. He hit a record six home runs in All-Star games. At one point in the 1950s, he played in nearly 900 consecutive games. Musial played for so long that he was a grandfather before his career ended. In 1962, at age 41, Musial hit 330, but his numbers went downhill in 1963, and he announced plans to retire at the end of the year. All told, Musial was the all-time NL hits leader upon his retirement, and second only to Ty Cobb in MLB history. He had a 331 career average, a 417 on base percentage, 475 home runs, 725 doubles, 1,949 runs, and 1,951 RBI. Musial finished in the top 10 in NL MVP voting 14 times and shares the all-time record for all-star appearances at 24. Musial remained affiliated with the Cardinals for the remainder of his life, and he was their general manager during the World Series winning campaign of 1967. He was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1969, named to the MLB All-Century team in 1999, was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2011, and is consistently ranked among the top five left fielders in MLB history. Musial is also the owner of one of the most remarkable statistics in sports history. He amassed 3,630 career hits, with 1,815 at home and 1,815 on the road. That stat is a fitting testament for Stan the Man Musial and his legendary consistency. Card number 151 belongs to Bobby Malkmus of the Washington Senators. 1959 was Malkmus's third season in MLB. Malkmus played parts of six MLB seasons for the Braves, Senators, and Phillies, but only appeared in a total of 268 games, mostly at second base, but with a little shortstop and third base mixed in. 
Malkmus was twice selected in the Rule 5 draft in his career, first by the Senators in 1957 and then by the Phillies in 1959. Following his playing career, Malkmus spent nine years as a minor league manager and then worked as an amateur scout for Cleveland covering New York, New Jersey, and Eastern Pennsylvania. As of this recording, Malkmus is 92 years old and will turn 93 in July of 2024. Card number 152 belongs to Johnny Klipstein of the Los Angeles Dodgers. 1959 was Klipstein's 10th big league season. He signed with the Cardinals as a teenager, but eventually debuted in 1950 with the Cubs. For the first seven years of his career, Klipstein was a swingman for the Cubs and eventually the Reds. In the 1956 start against the Braves, Klipstein took a no-hitter through seven innings when he was lifted for a pinch hitter. The Reds kept the no-hitter going through the end of nine innings but lost the game in 11. Three pitchers had never combined for a no-hitter through nine innings before, but MLB stopped recognizing such games as no-hitters, where a team eventually gets a hit in extra innings in 1991. Klipstein was traded to the Dodgers in 1958, and from there he pitched almost entirely out of the bullpen. He pitched two innings in the Dodgers' 1959 World Series win and later pitched for the Indians, Senators, the Reds again, Phillies, Twins, and Tigers in a career that spanned 18 years. Klipstein was known as an easygoing and affable presence for his teams, and former MLB historian Jerome Holtzman summed him up thusly. He was one of the most liked players of his time. Card number 153 belongs to Jim Marshall of the Chicago Cubs. 1959 was Marshall's second season in the majors. Marshall put up strong hitting numbers in the minors, including 28 homers in 1956 and 30 in 1957. That never translated to MLB success, though. He broke in with Baltimore in 1958 and was selected off waivers by the Cubs later that season. In a nondescript five-year MLB career, Marshall also saw MLB action with the Cubs, Mets, and Pirates mostly at first base. Marshall stayed in baseball after he stopped playing first as a minor league manager and then a big league coach. The Cubs hired him as manager midway through the 1974 season. He never had a winning club there and was fired in November of 1976. Marshall also managed the Athletics for one season in 1979. He returned to the ranks of minor league managing, which he did for nearly two decades before taking a position as a spring training instructor and Pacific Rim director with the Diamondbacks. He retired after 70 years in baseball in 2021. As of this recording, Marshall is 92 years old and will turn 93 in May of 2024. Card number 154 belongs to Ray Herbert of the Kansas City Athletics. This was the seventh big league season for Herbert. A Detroit native, Herbert signed with his hometown squad out of high school and debuted for the Tigers in 1950. He became a bullpen arm for the Tigers upon his 1953 return from military service, but was unimpressive over two seasons and was dealt to the Kansas City Athletics for cash considerations in 1955. Herbert built himself back up as a starter in the minors and was a back-end rotation arm for the A's until he was dealt to the White Sox in 1961. The following year, 1962, was by far Herbert's best in MLB when he won 20 games with a 3-2-7 ERA in 236 and two-thirds innings, earning a spot on the AL All-Star team. In 1963, Herbert led the AL with seven shutouts. He pitched three more years after that, including two with the Phillies. He retired to the Detroit area, where he remained involved with baseball by working as a batting practice pitcher for Tigers home games from 1967 to 1992. Card number 155 belongs to Eno Slaughter of the New York Yankees. 1959 was Slaughter's 19th and final season in the major leagues. From the age of 22 as a wiry young right fielder for the Cardinals until his final season as a wily veteran split between the Yankees and Braves, the man known as Eno's Country Slaughter only played at one speed, full tilt, all the time, for every second on the field. Starting in 1939, Slaughter had a stranglehold on the Cardinals' right field spot through 1953 except for three years in the military during World War II. He led the NL in doubles in 1939, and in 1942, he finished second to his teammate Mort Cooper in the league MVP voting after leading the NL in hits, triples, and total bases. In 1946, Slaughter had an NL leading 130 RBI and finished third in MVP voting, but saved the signature moment of his career for Game 7 of the World Series against the Red Sox. With two outs in the bottom of the eighth and the score tied, Slaughter stood at first base when Harry the Hat Walker drove a double to left center field 
and Slaughter took off around the bases. He stunned the crowd, the Red Sox fielders, and his own third base coach by blowing through the stop sign and barreling towards the plate. The relay throw from Red Sox shortstop and franchise icon Johnny Pesky was too late, and Slaughter scored the World Series winning run on what became known as his Mad Dash. Slaughter would make the NL All-Star team in each of the following seven seasons in St. Louis. His career was not without controversy. The impact of a 1947 incident where he spiked Jackie Robinson in the ankle during a play at first base followed Slaughter for the remainder of his life. In an effort to get younger in 1954, the Cardinals dealt Slaughter to the Yankees, who subsequently traded him to the Athletics in 1955. Slaughter's days as a regular were over by the time the Yankees reacquired him in 1956, but he still had his share of clutch moments, including a home run in the 1956 World Series. In total, Slaughter hit an even 300 over 19 seasons, won four World Series, made 10 All-Star teams, and had five top 10 MVP finishes. He returned to North Carolina to farm tobacco and later coached baseball at Duke. The Veterans Committee elected Slaughter to the Hall of Fame in 1985, and the Cardinals retired his number in 1996. That's going to do it for this edition of 59 Tops Friday on Wax Pack Wisdom. Do you have a story about one of the people, players, or teams we discussed today? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our Wax Pack Wisdom content. In the video description, you will find our source material for this episode, links to where you can follow us on all social media channels, as well as a list of our favorite nonprofits and charities. Please consider a donation to one of them if you enjoyed this content. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Wax Pack Wisdom. Take care.